Hello and welcome. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rawat. Lots lined up ahead for you today. It's a very uh, news-heavy day today. The 15th President of India will be announced, and with it likely to be Draupadi Murmu, the BJP has big plans for celebrations. Absolutely, Gargi. Uh, major celebrations planned there. On the other side, we have the Congress that. Uh, in fact, is planning also a demonstration as Sonia Gandhi has been summoned by the Enforcement Directorate. Will we see a repeat of what happened when Rahul Gandhi was called by the ED last month? Gargi, that's a big question. But let's take a look at the headlines. Counting of votes will take place today after the presidential election that saw Yashwan Sinha take on Draupadi Murmu. And with Murmu expected to be the 15th president, the BJP has planned major celebrations across the country. Congress President Sonia Gandhi is set to appear before the ED today in connection with the National Herald money laundering case, the Congress to stage demonstrations. After the turmoil in the shift, Sena Sharat Pawar looks to reorganize the NCP. All party units have been dissolved with immediate effect. And old news co-founder and fact-checker Mohammed Zubair walks free after 23 days in jail. The Supreme Court grants him interim bail in all FIRs in the uh, state of Uttar Pradesh. He was arrested last month over what the police said was a highly provocative tweet. The Punjab police killed two shooters involved in Sidhu Musewala murder in a five-hour encounter in Atari, just 10 kilometers from Pakistan. The two were planning to flee across the border. And is Sunak or a trust, uh, Rishi Sunak and uh, Liz Truss uh, in the Tory party leadership runoff? Those are the two in the running to replace Boris Johnson. It boils down just to the two of them. Let's get started. Draupadi Murmu or Yashwan Sinha, India's next president, will be declared today once votes for the election are counted, beginning at 11 a.m. today in Parliament. And going by the stand taken by various parties, NDA candidate Draupadi Murmu is set to win. Right, uh, Gargi, we can't wait for that to happen, right? Uh, voting for that uh, poll will uh, ended on Monday with nearly 99% of the electors permitted to vote in the Parliament House, exercising their franchise. Voting also took place in state assemblies across the country. Several legislators in the state uh, said that they cross-voted in favour of Murmu by not following their party line, Gargi. That's right. So we're expecting uh, that announcement to come uh, this morning and counting of votes will take place. Uh, the, as we said, this was after Yashwan Sinha and uh, the, took on uh, Draupadi Murmu. That's why there was even an election given that uh, the op opposition put up a joint candidate. But as we said, the BJP is already gearing up to celebrate Murmu's win. Uh, with that announcement expected today, party workers have been instructed to begin the celebration as soon as the results are announced. And Preparations underway across the country, especially in more than one lakh tribal villages. According to sources, the BJP High Command planned celebrations. Uh, this is across uh, 15,000, uh, in fact, uh, mandals and also a victory rally at Guwahati in its second half of the day with 10,000 BJP supporters led by Assam Chief Minister, that's Himanta Biswa Sarma. Special celebrations in the Adivasi tea tribe uh, dominated areas of Upper Assam. And also uh, the tea garden workers are from the same community as Draupadi Murmu Gargi. All right, so celebrations planned across the country uh, and uh, BJP will celebrate at 5 p.m. today evening. Party workers and workers will rally uh, from the BJP office to the Jai Thumb Square. Prime Minister Modi is also expected to meet Draupadi Murmu at around 4 o'clock and there's also some kind of a road show uh, by uh, BJP President J.P. Nadda. All right, so the BJP all set to uh, celebrate today while the Congress is all set to hold protests and demonstrations. Congress interim president Sonia Gandhi will appear before the enforcement directorate today morning in connection with the National Herald AGL money laundering case. Top Congress leaders have planned to gather at the AICC headquarters in the national capital to express solidarity with the president. A uh, meeting was held at senior MP uh, Malika Khar Arjun Kharge's residence in the evening uh, yesterday where a plan was chalked out for today regarding the Congress's strategy that is being adopted inside as well as outside the parliament where the monsoon session is underway. 
Remember, uh, similar protests were held when uh, Sonia Gandhi's son and former party president Rahul Gandhi had been questioned by the ED in June. In the same case, in that time, we saw major demonstrations, we saw major security as well. And uh, party workers, party leaders, MPs, chief ministers all had courted arrest when Rahul Gandhi had been summoned for questioning. And remember, that had gone on for a few days. And today as well... Uh, there's tight security outside the Congress office, so the police also uh, ready, you know, with those uh, barricades, etc., as uh, Sonia Gandhi will be questioned by the ED. Right, uh, Gargi, uh, Rahul Gandhi was questioned uh, over five days and uh, do remember every day he was questioned for maybe over two, uh, 10 hours uh, per day. So uh, will that uh, also happen with Sonia Gandhi being the big question? What time is she expected to appear? Those are and visuals can... from right outside Sonia Gandhi's residence. And Jairam Ramesh tweeted yesterday that tomorrow as the political vendetta unleashed by the Modi Shah duo against our top leadership continues, the entire Congress party across the country will demonstrate its collective solidarity solidarity with the Sonia Gandhi in the most telling manner. So plans there and as you can see police is also ready with barricades and uh, people, uh, some of the, the people there are arriving, it's not clear who they are but let's go across to Arvind for more on this. So Arvind are we going to see a repeat of what we saw those days when uh, Rahul Gandhi had been summoned for questioning by the ED? Yeah, uh, Gargi, in all likelihood, it will be uh, much more uh, kind of a protest that we can expect, uh, the vigor of the protest we can expect to be much more when you compare it with former Congress President Rahul Gandhi when he was summoned by the Enforcement Directorate for questioning in the Nasser Herald case. In fact, as per the Congress Party uh, strategy, in fact, they have called for an opposition leaders meeting inside the parliament at 10 a.m. wherein it would be chaired by leader of opposition in Raj Sabha, Malli Arjuna Karge. After the meeting with the opposition parties, Congress MPs will also be uh, uh, meeting uh, to uh, to decide the uh, strategy for inside the parliament, how to protest against this alleged misuse of central agencies. So at around 11 a.m. when both the houses begin, almost all the like-minded opposition parties will come together and they will protest inside the parliament, both uh, Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha against this alleged misuse of central agencies. That's what they have planned. And after that, almost all the Congress MPs will then move to Congress headquarters. That's their plan. Once the parliament is adjourned, then they will be moving to Congress headquarters where they want to take out a march from Congress headquarters to enforcement directorate. But according to our sources in Delhi police, that though all these Congress MPs will be allowed to uh, proceed to the Congress headquarters, but they won't be allowed to move towards the enforcement directorate. They would be restrained or they would be detained if they proceed towards the enforcement directorate. So the Delhi police have also beefed up the security across the national capital and also very important junction uh, towards enforcement directorate have already been barricaded by the Delhi police but the Congress party leaders and also Congress workers have been mobilized across the national capital to march towards the enforcement directorate. But coming to the enforcement directorate side, what our sources are saying is that Sony Andy has been summoned by the enforcement directorate for questioning in the National Herald matter somewhere around 11 o'clock. She has to appear before the agency at around 11 o'clock. But keeping her health uh, issues in mind, uh, unlike Rahul Gandhi, uh, the questioning of uh, Sonia Gandhi won't take such a long time because Rahul Gandhi, we did see uh, he was questioned for almost 10 hours a day and it went on for almost five consecutive days. Almost 50 hours he was questioned by the enforcement directed. But that won't be the case with Sonia Gandhi. That's what our sources are hinting at because keeping her health uh, issues in mind, the in enforcement agency, uh, the enforcement directorate is also trying to control the investigation or wrap up the questioning of Sonia Gandhi at a much faster time. Right. Uh, given the fact that she hadn't been well, which is why this uh, uh, she uh, she was meant to reach uh, the ED office last month. That was delayed uh, on account of her health. Uh, will she be alone at the ED office? Will somebody be accompanying her? Vidya, uh, while she enters the enforcement directorate office, she can uh, a lawyer or an advocate of hers can accommodate her, can uh, can accompany her. But once she enters the inter interrogation room, then she she won't be allowed to uh, take her lawyer with her. So uh, only Sonia Gandhi will be alone, alone in the interrogation room, but she'll be grilled by the investigating officer of this particular case. Also, what we are being told is that both Rahul Gandhi and also Priyanka Gandhi will be accompanying their mother when she reaches the enforcement directorate office. Both of them will come and drop her mother, and then they will get back to their own respective places. So they would be accompanying her till the enforcement directorate office, but once inside the interrogation room, then Sonia Gandhi will be all known, whereas she will be grilled by the enforcement directorate office, and she has to give her answers, and that will also be recorded both audio, video, uh, audio visually, and also uh, written statements will also be taken. 
Right, uh, thank you, Arvind, for joining us with all those uh, details. Uh, all right, so already you can see the barricading outside Sonia Gandhi's residence. It's right next to the Congress office, so the police already out in, you know, uh, like we saw with Rahul Gandhi as well, uh, that they were barricading and preventing workers from gathering. And uh, today, Sonia Gandhi will go in for that questioning. The Congress planning major demonstrations across the country, especially uh, given uh, that when their former president, uh, Rahul Gandhi, was questioned, there were such big demonstrations, and now uh, they were to have... Uh, you know, their president being questioned by the ED, the Congress looking to make a more of a show of the protests. Right, uh, with rows of people gathering already and uh, she's expected to reach the ED office at about 11 o'clock this morning, just this, exactly the same time that Rahul Gandhi was uh, being uh, summoned by the ED in June. So, of course, uh, there is still time, but uh, those visuals of the police gathering outside her residence, uh, putting out those barricades as well as people already uh, there to show uh, their support towards uh, the president. Well, uh, moving on to news now from Maharashtra and after the crisis in the Shiv Sena and the fall of the MVA government, some introspection in the NCP. Now, the NCP dissolves all departments and cells of the party with immediate effect and senior NCP leader Prafal Patel sends a letter to all NCP departments. So clearly, uh, NCP Supremo Sharad Pawar is looking to reorganize the party structure and uh, post this rebellion uh, that took place in the Shiv Sena. The NCP is carefully looking at its own structure and organization. Uh, so Sharad Pawar looking to strengthen the NCP and reorganize it, especially after the crisis and the split in the Shiv Sena. And stung by what he described as treachery, Shiv Sena leader Aditya Thakre is embarking on a tour across several districts of Maharashtra, Gargi, starting today. That's right. He's already addressed Shiv Senics across Mumbai in several shakhas of the party. And TV Saurabh Gupta spoke with him. You addressed a meeting, but you know the rebellion is still growing. And you had very strong words for the rebels. But what next? Because it seems that now the BMC elections are going to take place and you've addressed several issues there also. Uh, it's not a rebellion, it's treachery. And treachery will always be treachery, it's a betrayal. Uh, rebellion needs a little more courage to stand in your own ground. And I've always appealed to all of these uh, traitors, either if you want to remain a traitor, at least have the courage to resign and contest elections again. If you want to come back, our doors are always open because we have done no wrong. We have always given them whatever we could give them and they were a part of the government. So, I can't comment on any of the selfish requirements. What about the fact that you know, they are now also aiming to dislodge Uddhavdi, they've also dislodged the new you know, act, uh, national they are, they are aiming for the Shiv Sena, the yes, Shiva symbol. They are aiming to finish off the Shiv Sena and the Thakre family. Uh, but if you see on ground, the sentiment of the people is with us. They know that this is a betrayal of a man who is a good person. Uh, I've always been told that politics is not a place for good people. And this is what they're trying to prove to us. And then, you know, you address the crowd in the rain. Yes, that's because it's monsoons. Uh, and thankfully, just five minutes from here, there's Hind Mata and Gandhi Market, which has been traditional flooding points. All of us have been going there. Because of the work we did through the BMC in the last six months there, and of course, uh, now Milan Sabi next year, there will be no flooding there, and that, that's what we proved this time. And all over 20 days in jail, Alt News uh, co-founder, that's uh, Mohammed Zubair, uh, finally managed uh, to get interim bail from the Supreme Court on Wednesday. And he walked out of Tihar jail last evening. The Supreme Court granted him uh, interim bail uh, to the fact checker in all FIRs by the police of Uttar Pradesh. And there were some sharp observations in the top court. The bench led by Justice D.Y. Chandrachur added that power of arrest should be used sparingly. Mohammed Zubair was arrested on June 27 by the Delhi police. Seven more FIRs were filed against him in Uttar Pradesh. In fact, an SIT was also set up that's now been disbanded. The co-founder of fact-checking a website, Alt News, was arrested over a four-year-old tweet uh, sharing a screenshot from a popular Hindi movie. And uh, Alt News uh, co-founder Pratik Sinha tweeted this morning a picture along with Zubair and he said that Zubair wants to convey his heartfelt gratitude to everyone who stood by us and supported us in the last few weeks. He'll be back real soon. So Pratik Sinha tweeting that picture. Remember uh, the the the. Uh, in fact, the lawyers uh, for the UP uh, side wanted that the Supreme Court tell Zubair not to tweet, uh, but the Supreme Court refused to do that, saying, how can we stop him? He is a journalist. He can say uh, what he wants.
And our colleague Saurabh Shukla was outside the hard jail when Zubair was released and he sent us this report. मोहम्मद जुबैर तेईस दिन बाद जेल में रहने के निकल गए हैं मोहम्मद जुबैर को सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने आज बेल दी है लखनऊ यूपी में उनके खिलाफ सात मुकदमे थे और दिल्ली वाले केस में उनको पिछले हफ्ते बेल मिल गई थी तो मोहम्मद जुबैर निकले हैं बाहर और जुबैर से हम कोशिश करेंगे कि एक रिएक्शन लें वो अपनी लीगल टीम के साथ में हैं जुबैर हाउ आर यू फीलिंग विक्ट्री साइन दिखा रहे जुबैर 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 मैं सौरभ हूँ एन से एक सेकेंड तो आप यहाँ पर भी लीगल टीम के साथ निकले हैं मोहम्मद जुबैर और आप देख सकते हैं कि विक्ट्री साइन जो है जुबैर कुछ कहना चाहेंगे इशारों में ही कह दीजिए विक्ट्री साइन दिखा रहे हैं सच की जीत हुई क्या कहना चाहेंगे एक वर्ड एक वो इन वन वर्ड आई ड्राइव राइट हाँ तो विक्ट्री साइन दिखाते हुए मोहम्मद जुबैर निकले हैं तो आपने देखा मोहम्मद जुबैर निकल गए हैं उनकी रिहाई हो गई है लगभग तेईस दिन वो जेल में रहे हैं और अब वो यहाँ से निकल करके अपने घर जाएंगे और कोर्ट ने उनको इजाजत भी दी है कि वो ट्वीट भी कर सकते हैं लिख भी सकते हैं पत्रकार हैं तो तेईस दिन बाद जेल से बाहर निकले हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने अंतरिम जमानत दी यूपी वाले सारे मामलों में अब अब अपने वकीलों से चर्चा करेंगे उन्होंने बयान नहीं दिया पर विक्ट्री साइन जीत का सिग्नल जरूर दिया है तो फिलहाल मोहम्मद जुबैर तेईस दिन बाद निकले हैं उनके वकील काफ़ी खुश हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने राहत दी है और हम जानते हैं किस तरीके से पहले सीतापुर में उनको बेल मिली तो लखीमपुर वाले केस में गिरफ्तार कर लिया गया लखीमपुर के बाद हाथरस में दिल्ली वाले में बेल मिली तो उनकी एक एफ चंदौली में पाई गई तो एक जस्टिस चंद्रचूड़ ने कई टिप्पणियां भी की हैं उन्होंने कहा दुष्चक्र लगता है तो एक बड़ी राहत सुप्रीम कोर्ट से मिली है मोहम्मद जुबैर अब बाहर गए हैं वो बेंगलौर के रहने वाले हैं वो देश में कहीं भी जा सकते हैं और ट्वीट करने पर उनकी कोई पाबंदी नहीं है All right. So, Saurabh, you know, saying that that uh, there's no uh, stoppage on Muhammad Zubair tweeting or saying anything, which is what the UP government had wanted. And uh, now, moving on to a very horrific accident, Divya, and this is something I, uh, you know, we'd advise viewers that it, it's uh, quite a terrible uh, visual. We're going, going to show you right now an ambulance carrying a patient into attendance, lost control, and crashed into a toll booth in Karnataka's Udupi district, killing all the three and the toll attendant. The driver was injured. A CCTV camera at the toll booth shows the horrific accident on a wet road in Karnataka's coastal district, where it had been raining. In the footage, some men who appear to be security guards and toll operators are seen, uh, in fact, uh, moving to security. And three plastic barricades from one of the lanes on seeing that ambulance approaching their way. A very horrific accident uh, there, all because of the way. Right, the, the poor attendant. He was just trying to move out uh, some uh, plastic, uh, you know, thing over there. Oh my God, it's very difficult to watch. Well, uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, time for us to now slip into a short break. We'll get you more news on the other side. Welcome back. Now, uh, two gangsters suspected among the shooters in Singer Sudhu uh, Musewala's murder were killed in a shootout with the police uh, near Amritsar uh, yesterday. Gargi, three policemen were injured in that shootout as well. Right. It was quite a long standoff after the police learned that these gangsters were there. The two gangsters, Jagroop Singh Rupa and Manpreet Singh, were killed in this encounter, which lasted about four or five hours. The police confirmed that one AK-47 was recovered at the encounter site, and they suspected that, given that this was near the Pakistan border, uh, that these uh, two gangsters were trying to escape there. Right, uh, Gargi, just add that uh, very close to the Pakistan border, uh, this uh, uh, took place, and that, like you mentioned, it went on for about five hours in Atari. You can see the, the the shooting. Let's just listen to the firing taking place. Bhakna Kalan village near Amritsar waking up to the sound of gunfire as an intense encounter raged between the police and the gangsters who shot popular singer Sidhu Musewala after 5 hours of shooting less than 10 kilometers from the Atari border the two shooters were killed this man Jagroop Singh Rupa killed first the other suspect Manpreet Singh alias Mannu Kusa continued to fire for about an hour before he was killed around 4 pm in the afternoon
He died holding the AK-47 rifle he had used to shoot indiscriminately. The encounter began at noon as Punjab Police's anti-gangster task force tailed these two men. In the crossfire, a news channel's camera person got a bullet injury in his right leg. Ambulances reached the spot just minutes before the police declared Jagroop Rupa dead. The two belong to the Jaggu Bhaganpuria gang. Bhaganpuria had provided these shooters to Lawrence Bishnoi for the Musewala killing. The two evaded the police for 52 days. CCTV footage had recently surfaced showing Rupa and Manu Kusa riding a bike in Punjab's Moga district. The police intensified their search after that. Of the six shooters involved in Musewala's killing, three have now been arrested, two have been killed, one shooter, Deepak Mundi, is still at large. With Mohammad Ghazali, Ankita Mukherjee for NDTV. All right, moving on to news now from the UK and the race for prime ministership. And it's official. Rishi Sunak is now the closest anyone of Indian origin has ever been to take charge as British prime minister after his Conservative Party colleagues voted overwhelmingly in his favour with 137 votes in the final round. Right, uh, Conservative MPs have voted for the final two candidates to replace Boris Johnson as Penny Mordaunt is, uh, she was knocked out and uh, Sunak got 137 votes, Truss 113, Mordaunt actually had only about 105. The 42-year-old former Chancellor Sunak is not uh, short a similar easy ride as he faces a much tougher electorate uh, of uh, the Tory membership base uh, which has shown favouritism for his rival, that's Liz Truss in most recent surveys, Gagi. That's right. And with another head-on uh, televised uh, debate now scheduled on the BBC between the final two contenders on Monday and a series of hustings to be held up and down the UK, there is time for the MP's favourite to try and replicate that result at the end of the postal ballots. And that will be on September 5th. And that is when uh, finally uh, Boris Johnson's replacement will be announced. Also, Gargi, that video that's uh, doing the rounds on social media of him saying, Asta la vista, baby. That's Boris Johnson uh, saying, Asta la vista, and his final speech that he made in Parliament yesterday. That's right. Well, uh, so there you have it. The final two and Rishi Sunak very, very close to that top job. And with that time for us to slip into a short break. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's get you a report now on Sri Lanka and Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday was elected the new Sri Lanka president amid massive economic crisis in the island nation. Right, uh, Gargi, his uh, victory was treated with a fair, fresh outcry amongst protesters as he remains unpopular and a symbol of the old regime. Mr. Vikram Singhe has uh, been serving as the acting president after Godavaya Rajapaksha had to resign. Shrija sent us the details. When the day started, it seemed to be a neck-and-neck -neck fight between Ranil Vikramasinghe and Dallas Alaparema for the post of president. As protesters sat on Satyagraha on the stairs of the parliament building, MPs voted inside to choose the new president. But the tables turned. Several members of the principal opposition led by Sajid Premadasa, who had earlier decided to support Dallas Alaparema, cross-voted, giving a thumping victory to Ranil Vikramasinghe. He won by a huge margin of 134 votes, leaving Dallas behind with just 82 votes. His victory was greeted with a fresh outcry among protesters as he remains unpopular and a symbol of the old regime. Yes, it's Ranil again. Uh, the people are disappointed, distraught, disgusted. Uh, one of the things holding us back from receiving this aid all this time was the fact that we were being run by greedy dictatorial powers. And with Ranil coming in again, that's exactly what he is backing. Certainly, the will of the parliament is not the will of the people. But we can only hope that the new leaders will bring about some kind of economic relief to the people, like food, fuel, medicines, and that they will hold general elections as soon as possible and get rid of the presidential powers. 
The big challenge for Ranil Vikramasinghe is stabilizing Sri Lanka's economy. So far, Sri Lanka has been bailed out by the IMF 16 times and this is the 17th time that Sri Lanka is approaching the IMF. The six-time Prime Minister, Ranil Vikramasinghe, has been in talks with the IMF for a bailout over the last few weeks, but those talks failed to reach a conclusion as Sri Lanka has failed to show a sustainable debt situation. The IMF wants adequate debt assurances as the country has already defaulted around $51 billion and due to the political crisis, the IMF bailout has now been delayed. On the streets of Colombo, people are struggling with a shortage of fuel, hospitals, they've run out of essential medicines and even food is in short supply. People are without fuel, people are without transportation, medicines are in short supply, etc. So the question is, who is competent? Now, if it comes to knowledge and experience, Mr. Ranil Kramsinga does have it. But in terms of pulling together disparate political forces, uh, perhaps he's not the man. India has already given Sri Lanka nearly $3.8 billion in help through a credit line, but future support will also hinge on an IMF bailout package. Ranil Vikramasinghe is the new president of Sri Lanka, but what next? Gota Gogama that was created by the protesters say that will be converted into Ranil Gogama, which means the resistance will continue. But the question remains, if Ranil Vikramasinghe will be successfully pulling out Sri Lanka out of this economic crisis. Sri Dab for NDT. And Sri Lanka's uh, Prime Minister was elected President on Wednesday by lawmakers who had opted for a seasoned veteran leader to lead the country out of economic collapse despite widespread public opposition. Uh, In fact, after being elected as President, Ranil Vikramasinghe urged fellow lawmakers to unite now in saving the nation. We in Parliament are being questioned by the people as to why we cannot work together. Why are we trying to compete with each other at the risk of destroying the country? And there are many, many people who have these viewpoints, who feel there is a change necessary, and people who say so non-violent, without destruction. It is they we should help together with the silent majority. For those who seek to destroy, to threaten democracy, they must then be dealt with the law, by the law. For the others, I would like to bring everyone together so that a national consensus is formed as to the way forward. And today we'll know who will be India's next president. Draupadi Murmu or Yashwan Sinha, India's next president, will be declared once the votes for the election are counted. And that will begin at 11 a.m. in Parliament. And going by the stand taken by various parties, NDA candidate Draupadi Murmu is uh, set to win uh, Gargi. And voting for the presidential poll ended on Monday with nearly 99% of the electors permitted to vote in the Parliament House, exercising their franchise. Voting also took place in state assemblies across the country, Gargi. And several legislators in state said that they cross-voted. So from opposition parties, some of the legislators, in fact, said that they cross-voted in favor of Murmu and they didn't follow their party line. There could be no party whip for the presidential elections. And given that Murmu, uh, the kind of credentials that she has, she is all set to be the country's first tribal woman president. So, you know, many that and that, you know, that, that really appealed to many of the MLAs uh, across the country. So many of them even voting uh, for Draupadi Murmu and going uh, against uh, what their party's stand was. So the counting of votes will take place at 11. And the BJP has planned major celebrations after that announcement is made. Right, uh, Gargi. Also, uh, we will, uh, in fact, have the swearing-in ceremony that will take place on the 24th. Our party workers have been instructed to begin... Uh, in fact, celebrating as soon as the results are announced, preparations are underway across the country, especially in more than one lakh tribal villages. 
According uh, to BJP sources, the BJP High Command planned celebrations in about 15,000 mandals and, uh, you know, special uh, celebrations in different parts. In Assam, there's a victory rally that's been planned in Guwahati in the second half of the day. 10,000 BJP supporters are expected and it'll be led by Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma. There'll be celebrations in Adivasi, tea tribe dominated areas of Upper Assam, uh, given that many of those uh, workers there have come from Jharkhand. They belong to the same community as Draupadi Murmu, so the BJP is going to really use this as an opportunity to reach out uh, to uh, the tribal population across the country with these major celebrations. And of course, in uh, Raipur, uh, the BJP also planning big celebrations uh, that will take place. The Prime Minister is expected to meet uh, Draupadi Murmu at around 4 p.m. today and later at the BJP headquarters also big celebrations. JP Nadda expected to take out uh, a, a sort of victory um, uh, parade after that announcement this evening. So major preparations underway to really mark uh, Draupadi Murmu being the next president. Can't wait for that, Gargi. So by 11, that uh, announcement should come about, right? That's right. Moving on, opposition's VP candidate Margaret Alva has said that opposition unity is the need of the hour, Gargi. And she said that she believes that the Trinamool and AAP will come around to support her. She spoke exclusively to NDTV's Vishnu Som. At a time when opposition unity in this country has been so problematic, there are a couple of very important elections which have taken place. Uh, one of them, of course, for the post of president, and the other one taking place will be for the post of vice president of India. Uh, the opposition has announced, Mr. Sharad Pawar, in fact, announced the name of the veteran Congress leader, Margaret Alva. She's a five-time Congress MP, a union minister, and a governor as well. Uh, she's agreed to take on uh, this very challenging uh, election. Thanks, uh, Mrs. Alva, very much for being with us. I suppose the first question is, um, why did you choose to accept this at a time when the numbers appear stacked against you? Vishnu, elections are always a challenge, right? The important issue was to get all the opposition together to fight this election. And when they told me that they had agreed to make me the candidate and that I should represent them, I said yes. Right. Because I do believe that the need for opposition unity is the most important thing at the moment. And what about uh, the Trinamool Congress or the Aam Aadmi Party that the TMC has been hasn't really announced their support. Do you believe that it's just a matter of time? There is time and I'm hopeful and I believe that they will support me. What about others like the Aam Aadmi Party? Do you believe, uh, you know, the opposition is taking its time to come together? Uh, do you believe it should have happened faster? It doesn't all have to happen in one day. There are days, two weeks to go. And you will see things change as we go along. And do you believe that other parties as well uh, might actually join the fray and support you? Uh, parties, for example, like the BJD, uh, do you believe that going down the road, uh, they may actually be your supporters in this campaign? I have great faith in this leadership of all these states and approaching them. And uh, I'm sure that they will find it worthwhile supporting me. And ma'am, I, I realize you're, you're holding uh, your cards close to your chest. But that being said, um, would it be fair to suggest that you are actively, or, or those opposition leaders, Mr. Pawar, for example, is actively in touch with leaders such as Mamta Banerjee, or leaders such as uh, Mr. Patnaik, or others, Arvind Kejriwal, to get the process moving? Is that happening? It is happening and I am also directly in touch with many of them. And I've had long uh, relationship with many of them and uh, therefore I will also reach out directly to them. And so there are many friendships which uh, are beyond the political realm, they are personal relationships. Right. And uh, I have great faith in these friends of mine that they will stand by me at this time. Ma'am, uh, you know, in a sense, uh, 
you've, you've always been an extremely close uh, aide of the top Congress leadership, but the Congress, your party, uh, faces so many troubles, so many problems at this stage. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how this is a concern for you at a time when there are so many calls which have been made for even a change in the top leadership of the Congress, a leadership which you have endorsed and backed so closely in the past? The Congress leadership is with me. The Congress leadership wants a united opposition. There are challenges in every party, so not in one alone. And the Congress is facing these challenges. I know there are ups and downs. The BJP had two seats at one time and they moved on. You do not know what will happen tomorrow, who will be where. Let's wait, let's see things change. I have great hope and faith that the Congress will also pull itself out of this sort of downward phase, if I may say so, and be able to fight back. Ma'am, you, you know, your political career has been absolutely sterling. Some would suggest, barring an incident in 2008, a standoff that you had with Mrs. Gandhi over the issue of family entitlement and ticket distribution. That was then, this is now. Have all of those differences, be, and you've written about this, have all of those differences been sorted out as, as I speak to you today? I have no differences with her at all. <clears throat> Whatever I said, I have explained my position and soon after that she proposed me for a governorship. And I went on for five years to become a governor. So my relationship with Sonia ji, with Rahul, I have no problems. We are absolutely at peace with each other. But you did have problems with Mr. A.K. Antony, for example, in the past. You felt that he felt that you were responsible Pardon? for... You've had problems in the past with A.K. Antony when he was the Chief Minister of Kerala. Uh, in fact, this was something that came up in conversations with Mrs. Gandhi, I'm told as well. Uh, was that a, a part of your career which was problematic, differences with Mr. A.K. Antony? I have had differences with many Congress leaders over issues during all these years. You are talking about the 60s. It's almost 50 years past. So these are issues which have been long buried. I have written in my book the story of my life, what I went through, what I faced, and that is all. It's got nothing to do with them or their careers. What I have faced, I have recorded. And ma'am, there was also this uh, one uh, controversial set of comments which you'd written in your book about the role of Sanjay Gandhi in allegedly transferring tanks to South Africa during the apartheid years. Do you stand by those remarks, ma'am? Pardon me. These were reports from the press. Okay. It had been exposed in the press and I raised it in the house saying these reports have come and uh, that uh, this is something which because we had no diplomatic relations with South Africa because of their apartheid policy. I raised it in the house. I was supported by everyone and it was Sanjay who was supposed to be behind this whole uh, deal with CPN Singh and uh, CPN Singh was moved out. Sanjay had died. And he was moved out of that ministry and the matter was closed. Ma'am, uh, just getting back to these elections and the importance of these elections. Um, firstly, when did you first find out uh, who approached you first? And when did you actually consider? W was there ever any doubt in your mind that you wanted to take this challenge? Well, when I was told that the entire opposition had unanimously selected me, and they requested me to accept this challenge of fighting the election. I said yes. I had gone home, as you know. Yeah. I was in Bangalore. And I was not seeking anything. But when a united opposition said that they felt I could 
fight this election on, the, on behalf of the entire opposition? I said, yes. I know I've had a long innings, 50 years in public life. I have fought many battles. And you know something. In politics, you win or you lose. But the fight has to go on. Why I said yes was because I have been sitting back and watching what is happening in Delhi. The way the institutions of democracy have been undermined, the way parliament functioning has deteriorated, the way things are happening, I am a concerned citizen. I did feel that we had at some time to accept this challenge and fight unitedly. I am glad and shall I say I am also humbled in a way that the opposition thought of me and reposed their faith in me. I couldn't say no. I said yes when they approached me and I am now in the battle ready for the challenge. Ma'am, you know, uh, in our country, we, we champion the freedom of speech. But the freedom of speech, uh, some would suggest, is not what it once was. And it, some would suggest it's not the case even in Parliament, when there are now restrictions on what MPs can actually say. The choice of words which they use has to be very calibrated. And some would suggest that dissent within Parliament itself is no longer tolerated. Uh, if you were to win this election, would you ensure that there would be more democratic expression allowed in Parliament? I certainly would. You know something, Vishnu? I have seen Parliament since the 70s. I was in the Rajya Sabha for 24 years and then in the Lok Sabha. I have presided in both the houses. I have seen stalwarts like Vajpayee Prakashvi Shastri, Bhupesh Gupta, Chandrasekhar, uh, Mohandarya, whole lot of uh, very bold and very brilliant speakers speak, take on Mrs. Gandhi, take on the government and be able really to say what they wanted to say. We used to sit in awe and watch them. This was the tradition. We had a Radha Krishnan in the chair. We had a Vivi Giri. We had outstanding people, Hidayatullah Saab, all outstanding chairmen who never restricted the right and the freedom of speech. Parliament is meant for debate. Parliament is meant for discussion. Parliament is meant to oppose and Parliament is expected to work out a consensus. That is the role of the chair. And I believe that I would be able to strive and in some way or the other bring different sections of the house together sure. to find solutions to national problems. Well, ma'am, thank you for speaking to us and good luck uh, in, this, uh, in this very big challenge. And thank you so much for sparing some time to speak to us. Thanks very much indeed, ma'am. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And after the crisis in the Shiv Sena and the fall of the MVA government, some introspection time for the NCP. The Nationalist Congress Party President, Sharad Pavar, in fact, has dissolved all departments and cells of his political party with immediate effect, a senior NCP leader has confirmed. So, Sharad Pawar really taking you know, chances there, especially given the way the Shiv Sena, you know, the rebellion, the split uh, that's taken place. The NCP National General Secretary, Praful Patel, in fact, tweeted with approval of the National President, Nationalist Congress uh, Party, uh, Sharad Pawar, all departments and cells stand dissolved with immediate effect. So, they will uh, now be looking, you know, at everything very closely, at all the, the workers and party leaders and probably reforming that. But everyone clearly shaken by after what happened in the Shiv Sena, where Uddhav Thakre did not know that such a huge rebellion was brewing, uh, and, and you know, uh, by one of his closest aides, one of the people that he depended on, Eknath Shinde, who is of course now uh, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. So the impact being felt in the NCP as well. As they say, Gargi, better late than never. <laughs>
So Sharad Pawar there making an effort for introspection. And, and, and it was more of, of a party. shock for Sharad Pawar since he's the one who had stitched this whole uh, Mahavikas Aghadi government together. And uh, even at the time when that rebellion was taking place, when Eknath Shinde had moved to Gujarat and then uh, to uh, Assam, Guwahati, at that time also we heard that uh, Sharad Pawar came down quite heavily on his party leaders, those who were in the ministries, and saying, how are you not aware that this was going on, that so many MLAs had left overnight and gone uh, first uh, to Surat in Gujarat. And uh, given that the Home Ministry at the time was under uh, the NCP. So Sharad Pawar clearly taking no chances uh, given the mess that's uh, taken place in the Shiv Sena and the split in the party. In fact, Uddhav Thakre has been left with very few uh, MLAs or uh, MPs for that matter. That's been the latest with 12 MPs, uh, they're switching sides uh, to the Shinde camp and Eknath Shinde also now uh, writing to the election commission and uh, staking claim to the party. So that's uh, something uh, that uh, the Thakre camp will have to counter. But let's go across to Saurab now uh, for more. And Saurab, you know, given the kind of developments that have taken place in Maharashtra and, you know, the split in the Shiv Sena, now Sharad Pawar taking no chances. That's right. You know, in fact, uh, the NCP is looking to reorganize, especially after the you know, uh, fall of the MVA government. So obviously, this is something that the NCP now wants to do, given that you know, this is a development that has taken place in the last one month. Uh, the rebellion, if you remember, in the Shiv Sena began on the 20th of June, and it's exactly a month since then. And now, of course, the NCP, having learned from the experience of what happens when there's a split, wants to make sure that its party is in order because the BJP has been looking to poach from all parties is what sources say that and that is something that uh, you know the NCP at least wants to avoid as far as uh, you know the example of the Shiv Sena which saw a massive rebellion and then of course lead to you know leading to uh, the whole uh, you know the, the government falling so the NCP is setting its house in order looking for possible loopholes, reorganizing uh, ahead of, uh, you know, uh, two and a half years where it sees itself as, uh, you know, the role of the principal opposition party in the state. Welcome back. Today, Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi will be appearing before the Enforcement Directorate in connection with the National Herald AJL money laundering case and the Congress planning major protests and demonstrations. We've seen heavy security deployment outside the headquarters, Garhi. As we mentioned earlier, top Congress leaders have planned to gather at the AICC headquarters to express solidarity with the party's interim president. They'll also be addressing a press conference at 10 a.m. Let's go across to Sunil Prabhu now for more. And Sunil, a major security outside of the Congress office as well. And, you know, at the ED office and, uh, you know, people. And But we can see many people have gathered already at the Congress office. Tell us what's happening. That's right. Uh, in fact, I had to show my identity card. My camera person and me, Xavier, had to show our ID card three times. Uh, and they say clearly directions from the right, from the top, have been given. They are uh, blocking the entire road uh, to the uh, Congress office. So, uh, I mean, I would love to have shown you those barricades of Delhi police uh, providing security for us uh, by barricading and ensuring no supporters come. But I hope they do it for the people of Delhi who have law and order issues on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm also joined here as a protest takes place by a secretary uh, who's uh, present. What exactly are you planning to do? Because uh, anyway, Mrs. Gandhi has to go uh, to the ED. We'll assemble here. 10.30, our working committee member, secretary, general secretaries, then we'll take a decision. And you know the, how this situation is in Delhi, how Delhi police, home minister, it seems he has given a clear instruction, even media are not allowed, our workers, our cadres, our friends, they are not allowed to come to the party office. It's very sad, really sad for all of us. So here you can see, of course, uh, there are protesters that are continuing uh, to take place. They continue to shout uh, and uh, and protest out here. Whoever little bit we have, uh, I'll just take and just give you a round of what is the kind of security apparatus that Delhi Police has done uh, across uh, a year in the Congress office. It's uh, quite uh, uh, clear 
uh, that uh, they have uh, barricaded and ensured uh, on all entrances of 10 Janpath, uh, they have uh, cordoned off the area. Uh, Delhi police in full strength uh, to ensure uh, that uh, no, uh, uh, you know, uh, people come uh, uh, to the uh, party office, to the party headquarters. Uh, they have made those provisions out here. Uh, clear instructions have come uh, from the headquarters. Uh, this, uh, this kind of barricading uh, usually does not take place. Uh, we are told uh, this happened during the, uh, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, uh, time when he was summoned to the Enforcement Directorate. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, all roads uh, closed uh, to the Congress headquarters uh, as well as the Congress President uh, Sonia Gandhi's uh, uh, residence. So this is the kind of uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, barricading and uh, security apparatus that have been taken. And as I said, uh, both our camera person and me had to show ID card at least three in three occasions uh, before we could go uh, with clear instructions that this has come from the high command, uh, even though we are uh, uh, PIB accredited uh, journalists. Right, Sunil, also just compare this for us. When Rahul Gandhi was grilled for about five days, was the security deployment as intense or are you seeing an increase um, at the moment? Well, to be very honest, I wasn't here when uh, Rahul Gandhi went to the enforcement directorate, so I won't be, be able to give that uh, thing. <laughs> right, but what we have been told holiday by all that accounts, time. is that a similar Lucky exercise Sunil. has been. <laughs> all right, Sunil, so you're on holiday that time. Yes, uh, we do recall. But tell us also that today, the you know, given that they protested so much, there were demonstrations, you had leaders courting arrest, etc. During the Rahul Gandhi uh, time when he was called to the ED, now with the Congress president being summoned, they're planning, you know, even bigger protests and not just in Delhi, but across the country. That's right, uh, Gargi. So you will see the Delhi unit in front of the Lieutenant Governor's house in, uh, at uh, Rajnivas, as well as across the country, uh, various state units have been asked uh, to ensure uh, that uh, provisions are made uh, to continue to protest like never before. Uh, they want to be, uh, to be standing and counted and to make that uh, you know, uh, point uh, that uh, central agencies are at the behest of the Narendra Modi-led government are going ahead and attacking uh, their leaders on uh, cases uh, which really do not uh, require uh, and, and summoning their leaders. So it's on that basis that uh, these investigating agencies, and it's just not Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi as you're well aware, uh, it's across the political spectrum. Uh, if you're inimical to them, uh, there are definitely cases and it's in that context uh, that uh, these protests are taking place. Sonia Gandhi, of course, as the Congress president uh, and has, uh, uh, is really somebody uh, where the Congress party really rallies around and this is now another point uh, for them to once again show solidarity with their leader. As always, Anil, thank you so much for joining us with the latest. We will, of course, revert to you for regular updates. Right, and as uh, the Congress is planning those demonstrations, the BJP is planning for major celebrations uh, today as India will get its 15th president. Remember, the contest was between NDA's Draupadi Murmu and opposition's Yashwan Sinha, and the president will be declared uh, later today. The numbers are clearly stacked in favor of Draupadi Murmu. She's said to be India's first tribal woman president, Gargi. The results, as we know, will be declared immediately after the counting which took place on the 18th of July, with nearly 99% of the electors permitted to vote in the Parliament House exercising their franchise. Now, voting also took place in state assemblies across the country. Several legislators and states said they cross-voted in favour of Murmu by not following their party line. And the swearing-in of the President will be... Uh on the 25th of July, but let's also talk about the kind of preparations that are being made uh, by the BJP for that, uh, you know, victory that is sure to come and Draupadi Murmu being the next president. So the BJP gearing up for that. Party workers have been instructed to begin the celebration as soon as the results are announced and preparations are underway across the country. And this is especially uh, being done in one lakh tribal villages, so really reaching out to the tribal population in the country. Right, Gargi. Also, according to our sources, the BJP High Command plans celebrations in about 15,000 mandals as well. And in Assam, a victory rally at Guwahati in the second half of the day is planned with around 10,000 BJP supporters, which is supposed to be led by the Assam Chief Minister. Now, special celebrations in the Adivasi and Tea tribe dominated areas of Upper Assam are also being organized. Remember, the tea garden workers are from the same community as Draupadi Murmu. Meanwhile, in Raipur, the BJP will celebrate this evening. Party leaders and workers will rally from BJP office 
to Jess Thumb Square. And uh, there you can see uh, the, the scenes outside uh, the place where Draupadi Murmu is currently staying and uh, next she will be moving into the President's estate. That's very interesting. Uh, today the Prime Minister is also expected to meet her at uh, 4 o'clock. Let's just listen in uh, to what uh, Draupadi Murmu's brother had to say. आज तो ऐसे भी खुशी का माहौल है आज का दिन नहीं जब से मतलब दीदी का नाम डिक्लेयर हुआ तभी से खुशी का दिन चालू है मतलब डेली डेली हम लोग जश्न मनाते रहता है आज तो उससे भी ज़्यादा ज़्यादा खुश है और हम लोग घर का आदमी हो के तो हम लोग को तो खुशी है मगर ये माहौल मतलब सौ आदमी का खुशी बहुत शहर में बहुत खुशी है इसका जर्नी इतना अच्छा हुआ रहता है मतलब शुरू से अभी तो अच्छे ही जर्नी ही चल रहा कि अभी तो बस राष्ट्रपति कुछ देर में डिक्लेयर होने वाला है तो राष्ट्रपति बनने वाला भी है वो हम लोग को पूरा उम्मीद है कि वो राष्ट्रपति बनेगा उसीलिए बहुत खुशी का माहौल है दैट्स राइट एंड दिस इज बीजेपी न्यू पॉलिटिकल आउटरीच दईडिया इज टू सेलिब्रेट द्रौपदी मुर्मूज विक्ट्री एंड सेंड अ मैसेज टू द ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी दैट बीजेपी इज द फर्स्ट पार्टी which first nominated a, a, a tribal uh, women candidate in the presidential elections and now just look at the list of parties which have supported Dropdi Murmu in run up to the presidential elections i was just counting the numbers there are nine non bjp opposition parties who have extended support to Dropdi Murmu's candidature and that is why she is all set to get a big win today uh, the list of course started with biju janata dal which was the first party to actually announce support for Dropdi Murmu and then YSR Congress party followed and we saw that even key opposition parties like Jharkhand Mukti Morcha Bahujan Samaj party they also extended their support to Dropdi Murmu so it was a political master stroke of the NDA to actually field a tribal women candidate and there were many parties who found it very difficult to actually oppose her candidature and that is why when the actually the campaigning started the nda did not have the majority numbers it needed to push its candidate through but the announcement of dropdi murmu's candidature of course tilted the scale in nda's favor and of course the formal announcement will be made around lunch time today and we have been told that soon after the announcement is made of a victory prime minister naren modi will go and call on her at around 4 pm and that is also the time when bjp has decided to hold a road show in delhi itself the delhi bjp leaders will be conducting this road show the idea is to celebrate uh, the victory of india's first tribal women president and all uh, preparations are now afoot not only in delhi in almost every part of the country to celebrate dobdi murmu's uh, victory and switching tracks Fact checker Mohammed Zubair, who was um, granted bail by the Supreme Court after his arrest last month over what the police said was a highly provocative tweet, walked out of Delhi's Tihar jail last night. In some sharp observations, the bench led by Justice D.Y. Chandrachur added that the power of arrest should be used sparingly. Now, Mohammed Zubair was arrested on the 27th of June by the Delhi police, and uh, seven more FIRs in different matters were then filed against him in Uttar Pradesh. The co founder of a fact check website alt news was arrested in delhi over a 4 year old tweet sharing a screenshot from popular hindi movie so he spent more than 20 days in jail in fact the, as we said uh, the supreme court making major observations as it uh, set zubair free and you know provided him that interim bail in all the cases and they also said that the up police sit probing zubair uh, cases should be disbanded the bail extends to all future cases and all cases are transferred to delhi and uh, the up said that stops zubair from tweeting the supreme court says no the supreme court also added you can't tell a journalist he cannot write supreme court also said that cannot take action against citizens who are raising their voice adding that no reason to further curb zubair's liberty And in fact, this morning, uh, Pratik Sena, who is uh, the co-founder of Alt News, also tweeted a picture along with Zubair, saying Zubair wants to convey his heartfelt gratitude to everyone who stood by us and supported us in these last few weeks. He'll be back real soon. And two gangsters suspected to be among the shooters in Singer Sidhu Musiala's murder 
were killed in a shootout with the police near Amritsar. Three policemen were injured too. And now the police from Punjab, Delhi and Mumbai are currently investigating the case. Right, it was a long, you know, standoff and shootout. Jagroop Singh, uh, uh, Rupa was killed first. The other suspect, Manpreet Singh, is Manu Kusa, continued to fire for about an hour before he was also finally killed at around 4 p.m. in this shootout. Uh, they can even hear the firing taking place. It was several hours. The police also recovered an AK-47 from the encounter site. Bhakna Kalan village near Amritsar waking up to the sound of gunfire as an intense encounter raged between the police and the gangsters who shot popular singer Sidhu Musewala. After five hours of shooting, less than 10 kilometers from the Atari border, the two shooters were killed. This man, Jagroop Singh Rupa, killed first. The other suspect, Manpreet Singh, alias Mannu Kusa, continued to fire for about an hour before he was killed around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. He died holding the AK-47 rifle he had used to shoot indiscriminately. The encounter began at noon as Punjab Police's anti-gangster task force tailed these two men. In the crossfire, a news channel's camera person got a bullet injury in his right leg. Ambulances reached the spot just minutes before the police declared Jagroop Rupa dead. The two belonged to the Jaggu Bhaganpuria gang. Bhaganpuria had provided these shooters to Lawrence Bishnoi for the Musewala killing. The two evaded the police for 52 days. CCTV footage had recently surfaced showing Rupa and Manu Kusa riding a bike in Punjab's Moga district. The police intensified their search after that. Of the six shooters involved in Musewala's killing, three have now been arrested, two have been killed, one shooter, Deepak Mundi, is still at large. With Mohammad Ghazali, Ankita Mukherjee for NDTV. All right, now a horrific accident and viewer discretion is advised. I, I'll, I'll warn you, these uh, visuals are going to be really, really something. An ambulance which was carrying a patient into a tenant's lost control and crashed into a toll booth in Karnataka's Uduti district, killing all three and a toll attendant as well. The driver was injured, the police has said, Gargi, and a CCTV camera footage, as we've shown on our screens, shows the, the horrific incident on a wet road in Karnataka coastal district where it had rained. Now, in the footage, some men who appear to be security guards and toll operators are seen scurrying to remove three plastic barricades from one of the lanes on seeing the ambulance approach. But suddenly, the ambulance crashes. All right, it's terrible to see those visuals.